When you're writing complex music with many contrasting parts, it can be easy for things to get a little muddy and for the listener to lose the ability to grasp what's going on. This is a very common trap that I often fall into when I'm writing, and then I need to pare things back, cut things down, and that usually helps the song a lot. But if you want to write some intricate passages, I have this certain concept that I've been thinking a lot about that I think helps with that, and here it is. Here's the beginning of a little ditty I wrote. In order to prevent things from getting too out of hand, too complex, too muddy, the complexity comes on in waves in this piece. So it starts out with very little rhythmic counterpoint. It's just quarter notes here in yellow. And we're going to have this be rhythmic idea one. And then a second rhythmic idea comes in. This is the beginning of the significant rhythmic counterpoint. And then a third against the original two, this green one here. And now this blue one here, this is yet another rhythmic counterpoint element giving us a total of four contrasting rhythms happening here. But they didn't just start this way. They came on like a wave. One, then two rhythms, then three rhythms, then four rhythms. And now, just as the wave will reach its climax and then fall, now we have only three contrasting rhythms again as the uh, bass clef of the marimba is just doubling the bass guitar for this moment, which means that we have the green, the pink, and the yellow contrasting rhythms. Now on the second page, you'll see that it goes from the previous three down to two again, as we have the marimba doubling the guitar and the synth doubling the bass. So you have two rhythms going on and then it resolves to pretty much just one unison rhythm for all the parts. And look at this. In comes another contrary element to create two rhythms at once and then this third one enters and see we've got a wave-like motion. Less, more, 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 less, 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 more, more, more in terms of rhythmic counterpoint, in terms of how much actual density there is to this piece. So let's just listen to the Muse score file for a sec and get an idea of how what we've seen so far actually sounds. Here it is. It seems pretty balanced, even though we do get to a point where there's four-part counterpoint, which can be a little risky for the muddiness and all that. So let's keep going here. Now we've got this unison of quarter notes and then a second green rhythm here and then a third pink rhythm. And now we get to this next page and things get all the way up to four contrasting rhythms before they go down to three, two, and then one again. And then from this moment, just this moment of all unisons where we have in the guitar, bass, and marimba two quarter notes and the synth is just kind of holding there. Um, just for a moment we have the unisons, but then the counterpoint begins again as this pink rhythm comes in and we get to the last page here and it goes from the two rhythms, the yellow and the pink, to three rhythms, the yellow, the pink, and the green as the marimba has come in playing in unison with the synth rhythmically, whereas the bass guitar is playing something contrasting to everything. And then it jumps back to unison rhythms for a big resolved ending, everyone playing the same rhythms together. So here's how all of it sounds on MuseScore, and then I learned it on instruments and played it, so you get to hear it with, uh, with some real instruments and drums too. All right, here we go. <laughs> 